Welcome to Pit Panther Talk. I'm Alan Saunders. This is Mike Vukovkan from Pittsburgh Sports Now, and uh, we're going to talk about well, the Pitt Panthers and how the football team has been uh, struggling so far. Start the 2018 season 2-3. and three. Uh, Got blown out by Central Florida last Saturday. Plenty on the minds of Pitt fans. I think, Mike, we've been hearing a lot of feedback. And uh, well, I think, from my end at least, most of it's been negative. Yeah, and most of it, uh, not surprisingly, is directed toward, uh, you know, the head coach, Pat Narduzzi. Um, the team... A lot of people expected, myself included, them to be uh, a lot better than what they've had. Uh, have shown this so far this year, and uh, the defense up until last week uh, has been the actually for every game has been, uh, I guess the the Achilles heel. He tried. It was something interesting. You've touched upon this week on the site, Alan. Would you make of the? Uh, I guess it shows some progress of him least attempting to try something, something you wrote about today on the site, uh, going a little bit nickel, which is something that he uh, didn't do at all in the past. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been one of the things that I've been harping on for, it feels like, well, it has been four years now, that they, they didn't play nickel, they didn't match personnel. So you'd have an offense with three or four or five wide receivers on the field and Pitt would only have two cornerbacks. And uh, to me, that just doesn't make any sense. Um, it doesn't make any sense to do that at any level of football. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was, it was good that, that Pitt finally seems to have opened their eyes to that problem, but it didn't really work. I mean, they gave up 45 points and 568 yards in Central Florida. Now, that's a good offense. Um, with number 12 team in the country now, I mean, certainly they score a lot of points and they gain a lot of yards against everyone. And, in fact, that was below their season average in both yardage and points. But, I mean, it's not like – it's, it's magic beans that's going to turn the pit defense into a good one just by playing at third cornerback. They still have a lot of other things they need to clean up. If you had to pinpoint something, because I'm just having a hard time figuring it out, why, uh, why they're struggling so much on defense. Is it, the, is it personnel? Did we overrate the personnel? Is it guys just not uh, performing? Is it third down? If, if you had to say one thing that is – Really, Kale, I'm I'm pointing a little bit toward third down. I, I've just never seen. Uh, I probably have, but I just don't remember seeing a team that does okay on first, first and second downs, and then you get to third down and you get third and ten, third and twelve, whatever, and the other team just converts like that. It, it, it's it's like clockwork, and that just has to be uh, deflate deflates a team, and it, when it happens two three times in a drive. Uh, I'm, I'm going at the third down and how they just can't get teams off the field. Yeah, I think it's just a lack of execution in general that sort of comes out a lot on third down. And we've seen a lot of those penalties. They've got, I think, 40 penalties in four games, uh, five games. Um, and I think we've seen a lot of those penalties come on third down. They're not getting to the quarterback. No. And when they do get past the offensive line, they're not able to bring them down. It seems I thought against Mackenzie Milton and UCF last week, there were a lot of plays where they were able to get past the UCF offensive line, and it just didn't seem to matter. They couldn't tackle the quarterback. And then those plays end up worse when you're facing a quarterback like Milton or like a Trace McSorley because now you've got him out of the pocket, he's got time, and now you're talking it's been – seven, eight, nine, ten seconds that you're now asking your cornerbacks to hold their coverage for, and that's just too long. I think you saw there was a third down against UCF. The pit defensive end had Milton dead to rights. I think it was Dwayne Hendricks. Couldn't bring him down. He, he rolled out to the right. The linebacker on that side tried to dive at his ankles. He couldn't bring him down. And then Milton throws a 15-yard pass on third and ten to the sideline in front of, I think it was Damari Mathis. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Mathis gets beat there, but some point, somebody's got to bring the yeah, quarterback okay. before it gets to that point. Uh, you saw the Quentin Reginis pa- uh, penalty on roughing the passer. There was a hands to the face from Amir, Amir Watts, Watts that extended to drive. Keyshawn Camp. Uh, there was a you know defensive holding. Those penalties are killing Pitt because not only are there a lot of them in total and in yardage, but it just seems like they're coming in those critical downs where Pitt really needs to be getting off the field. Um I think that's the biggest thing that's holding the defense back. And, you know, the other, in addition to that scheme that we talked about that, that I don't think was really maximizing their personnel, and, you know, I'm not sure if we, if we overrated some people. I do think I thought, I would have thought that we'd have had more production out of the de- defensive line. Between Watts and Camp 
and Weaver and Hendricks. That's four guys that I think are pretty good defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at their 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 pass rush statistics in particular, Pitt's not really getting it done with four guys. And I think that's something that uh, has has held back the team defense. It's been a bit underrated. I also don't think you know outside of Penn State and UCF. I mean, I thought the defense played really well against Georgia Tech, and I thought it played okay against North Carolina. I mean, they were in that game all the way. Um, you know that North Carolina isn't a great offense, but you know I, I think that the issues against North Carolina are the same thing we're seeing: tackling, pass rush, um, penalties. It's it's just it's you know Pat stands up there and says every Monday it's just details, and I know that's not what Pitt fans want to hear, but it really is just those little things like tackling the quarterback when you have him dead to rights, or or not taking the dumb penalty. Um, you know I think that's the thing that's really. The difference between what could be a pretty average defense and what seems like a pretty bad defense so far. The only guy, as you, t- I was thinking the same thing about the defensive line. I thought that was going to be the strength of the team coming into the year, and the only guy that I see making plays and around the ball a lot uh, is Rashad Weaver. Uh, the, the other three guys, uh, you know, people talk about. Uh, Pitt not recruiting well and not getting higher enough caliber players. When you're talking about those three, uh, three, uh, three, uh, Weaver was actually, you know, he was an original commit of Michigan, but those other three guys, you're talking about four star players there, and they're not playing. So uh, Pitt, that, that's a that's a common thing on Pitt message boards and uh, fan pages and stuff. They're not getting enough talent. Well, that defensive line, all those guys are big-time talented, or at least recruited players by major programs. Pitt wasn't the only team that thought those guys were good. And for whatever reason, some of those guys are entering. Dwayne Hendricks is in his last year. Keyshawn Camp shows flashes, but Amir Watts, same thing. Sooner or later, it's on the player, too, uh, to live up to uh, you know the potential that most people think you have. Yeah, and I think... The one thing that's been curious to me is the amount of substituting Pitt's done in the defensive line. I think, I mean, they've almost, maybe not 50-50, but like 60-40 between the first team defensive line and the second team defensive line. And I do feel like there's there's a drop-off there and that the second team has gotten beat, especially in the run game, a good bit. Um, you know, when we've seen some big running plays, I, I often notice it's the second team defensive line in there. If there was a, a place where I think I could put some of this on on the coaching staff, uh, that might be one of them. I, I think maybe that, like it, to me, a guy like Weaver probably should never come off the field no. unless he unless he asked to come off. Yeah. He's been one of Pitt's two. But Weaver, Virginis, and Hamlin at those three levels, I think those guys should probably be on the field every snap if they're physically capable of doing that. And sure, if a guy needs a break, go get a break. But I wouldn't be subbing those guys off just to sub them off, uh, certainly not as much as Pitt has been. But, I mean, outside of that, uh, it's not like there are, like, other guys that are, I don't know, a lot of fans want to beat the drum about, oh, they're not getting these young guys involved. That's what I I wanted to ask you, Alan. That was actually my next question before you finished your thought there because it's going down the same line. We read that all the time. I get messages. Play the younger guys. Let's get new guys in there. If you had to, you know the depth chart as well. You, you know you see as much practice as we're allowed to see. Are, are are there any guys out there? You know, I know the name Paris Ford will come up, but are there any guys out there that are younger that you think could give the team a spark? At least if, if we stay on the defensive side of the ball, that aren't getting. Uh, isn't getting the playing time. The only guy that I could think, it seems as though he's around the ball a lot when I when I see him on the field, is Twyman. Other than that, I don't know who who isn't playing that should be. Yeah, I mean, I I see. I was just actually saying this in the in the amongst the media in the pit uh, team room yesterday is that this is one of the biggest disconnects I think between fans and people that are in the sport, and it's really any sport. It's like when things are losing, fans are like, oh, they're losing. Shake things up. And when, when they're losing, inside the team is like, our best guys are losing. Why would we play our least our, our less good players, right? Yeah. If the guys that we think are, are doing the are the best guys we've got are losing, the guys we think are worse are probably not the answer. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, I look, I mean, I, 
I don't think there's a position where there's like a young guy that's being unfairly held back for Pitt right now. I mean, Twyman is a guy that I think could play more. He's probably what the the number five defensive tackle for them right now. I think he could move up that list a bit. But I mean, Shane Roy's playing really well. Watson Camp have just as much potential, if not more, than Twyman. It's not like you want to give up on those guys right. to play. He's what two years younger than him. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I had I, you know. So wh- where does he go? The same thing to me in the secondary is people you know bang the drum for Paris Ford. I'm like, look, Mathis and Pinnock are sophomores, and they're both better cornerbacks than Paris Ford right now. And there's not a single doubt in my mind about that. So if you want to play a young guy, it's going to be one of those young guys, not Paris Ford. Um, and, and I think, to be honest, Jackson and Motley have played pretty well. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like the fade route that, that plagued Pitt two years ago, right. that's not an issue no. anymore. Um, you know, they're not getting – listen, there's talented receivers. They're going to give up yards. But I don't think either of those guys is getting picked on or abused to the point no. where they need replaced. DeMar Hamlin has been, you know, finally starting to look like the player that Pitt – hoped he would be, and he's and physical. I think he's been one of Pitt's best defensive players. Dennis Briggs has struggled. He's missed some tackles, which is kind of uncharacteristic for him. I mean, I, I think the, the the book on him was that he was not the most athletic safety, but he was dependable. Yeah. And so maybe – but Phil Campbell missed the North Carolina game. He was um, supposedly sick. He hasn't played very much. And, you know, it's not like – that's maybe a position where Pitt doesn't have, like, this huge – I mean, who else would you put at strong safety? Jazzy Stalker maybe has played there a little bit. That's not really his no. position. Right. Um, so I don't, th- on defense, no. I do think a guy like Paris Ford could help this team. I don't, I'm don't. not sure why he's not returning punts. I would put him in that Jordan Whitehead role on offense. Exactly. I'm surprised about that. Let him run some toss sweeps. Just get him out there as an athlete. Um, but, you know, a player has to earn those. Uh, and, and, yeah, it's one thing to say, 